How's it going? Ninja Dan here. I want to say hello all to my Patreons. Thank you for, thanks for uh, signing up to my Survival Ninja Patreon page. Uh, I appreciate it, and I appreciate the, um, you know, taking your time to watch some of the videos that I have, over 25 videos. I have uploaded another um, 20 videos of meditation energy practices that I'll be putting on Patreon next week. So if um, anybody's more interested in watching more Patreon or learning about the things I um, have on Patreon towards meditation, telekinesis, psychokinesis, remote viewing, and eventually um, wilderness survival and other survival key factors towards self-sustainable resources and other things. Right now I'm going to share with you a uh, first aid kit that I created. Um, it's it's kind of an interesting first aid kit, um, knowing I put some morale patches on there, kind of funny. You can see that this one says <laughs> Jurassic Park Ranger, and then there's the bullet from, uh, you know, Super, Super Mario Brothers or Mario Brothers. This first aid kit is uh, um, just attached to this, like, molai type pouch um this is going to be an easy access um, first aid kit will be my car i'm going to sling it over my um my the flaps for you know the you know your, your the sun flaps you know the sun you know the whatever you call it so they're gonna be this gonna slide over it. You know, and I measured it perfectly. And actually mine, my you know, sun screen thing, it slides right over that perfectly. So actually, um, it's pretty good. Um and the reason why I'm doing that is because in a survival situation towards when you need first aid when you need a first aid kit. You, it's vital to have one right next to you. It's, v like, really important. Because, like, um, because this is for you. Like, I have another first aid kit. What's well, a little bigger and bulkier. I use the FR1 survival pouch. That's from Maxpedition. This one's, I think it is a Maxpedition one, too. But this one's just, I think this is more, like, army issue. Um, towards try some other off-brand company um, but this can be like attached to the re the river mirror type you know sun whatever it is I, I don't know why I can't think of the damn word but it'd be slide over there so I can easy access things I need it's just like a little zipper pouch and in here um, you know I have um, a healing stone that was not a fart that was my freaking couch leather couch that just got so that is a healing stone maybe they'll help you when you're going through some trauma so like if you get in a car accident and you get punctured by something maybe you turn your car over you really get a bad accident you're going to need something like this to save your life right now. Something to grab right there and now. You can't just like get out of your car and go in their, your trunk and grab your other first aid kit. You know, even if you have one, you, 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 you're paralyzed in a way that you're, you know, got in an automobile accident, you're at a car accident. Like, wow, shit, I, just, I don't want to get out of my car. Maybe my leg is broken. Maybe you have something that you feel that like... Your go your back's going numb. Your you maybe have a puncture, like something that actually like went through you and like got you, or or hit your arm, or you know your your head's bleeding and you're like you're coming too. But then you're like, oh shit, I like need something. Like these pouches are great because like they have these these loops that you can attach it right over your 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 sun. Um, protector whatever it is i can't think of the damn word but like that's it's a great pouch because um just imagine like you know like in a car accident i got in three car accidents in my life so i'm pretty much a safe driver but i was a pretty bad one with my uh 
Chevy truck, and uh, it was, and my finger was all, like, my thumb was broken, and it was hurting me bad, and, like, and I couldn't even dial the buttons to call 911, and it was, like, before you could have OnStar, so it's, like, it was a little rough, you know, um, that I had to call and go through all that to be okay, but, yeah, I was fine. After a while, you know, because I had to put a, my thumb in a cast and, you know, whatever. But, like, pretty much the truck saved my life because <laughs> I would have died if I didn't have, you know, whatever safety features on that truck. But, um, but an emergency, even if you, you're not hurt, but your passenger is hurt, knowing that you may be somebody hit you from the side but not your door side the other person's door side you grab something like this and use you know like right off the bat you grab um see this is like an ice pack and but it's used on a i think a pop my other go bag so you can buy these for like two dollars at like walgreens or like cbs pharmacy or like rei i think they sell them over at walmart too those are things that are good to grab. I might put one in there too. I'm just you can pull that out, pop it, put it right on your forehead. See how easy that is? Easy access. If you have a puncture, I do have a tourniquet. It's in my other bag in the garage, so I might put it. I'm planning to put it in here. Put that on. Tourniquet yourself up. You know, depending on you, you want to stop the bleeding with that. And I got another thing that you can stop bleeding. I have like in here. I got like. I put this thing together. It's like a gall. It's like um, quick cloth, and it has like a Israeli bandage. This one has like a pressure point bandage. So, you know, in a way that you put the pressure on the wound. See, so it's basically a tourniquet in there. Okay, and the, this quick cloth, you pour that into the wound, and it you know sucks up the blood. Makes it from not, you know, intensive bleeding. You know, they're going to bleed to death. And you put the Israeli bandage on. So it's a lifesaver right here. For anything kind of major, even gunshot wounds. Knowing that you're going to a rural area, somehow shit just happens. You get pit shot. You know, like somebody shoots you. You don't realize where it came from. It's hit you right in the arm. You're not to take care of it. Or somebody comes up to you and it's like, you know... You're asked, they're asked for change and then they pull a gun on you. Boom. Shoot you by the time you're trying to drive away or something. What not, you know? And they shoot you right in the back, right in the arm or the back or, you know, wherever. You're, you're not dead. But you have to patch yourself up. And having something quick in a very hypothetical situation that you, you don't have time to, like, go in your back of your trunk and grab something. So this is like duct tape, because duct tape's good to have too. Like you can pull this off and use it to bandage yourself up with the gall, with the galls you have here. So this is duct tape I put on here too. Anyway, I can use that to, you know, tape around my arm to make it more secure or wherever the puncture is or, uh, you know, anything. If I bump my head, you should have an ice pack right off the bat. Just grab, boom, pull your head. Get that swelling down, you know? Maybe you have Advil in there. Pop two Advil, you know? Um, I have something for maybe small wounds, you know, like just regular Band-Aids. A pencil in here. Jot things down. Um, here's a... Here's a little Band-Aid holder with this, like, tape on it. This tape is like that... You know, it's like that tape that you stretch for, like, muscle pulls and stuff. But you can really use it for tourniquets as well in different areas. Maybe you already used a tourniquet here, but you use it on your leg. You can use this and stretch it around and in a way that you can taper down the, you know, the gauze pad better. And it's just going to be a way to really patch yourself up quick in a way that when you have down one one. You call them, they come to your rescue, you're probably, Honey. you're already stopped the bleeding. And that's a good thing. Like you stop your own bleeding.
where you stop your passenger's blood already. You want to, you want to take care of people in your car. Even if you're driving for Lyft or Uber. I don't drive for Lyft or Uber. So I, I don't know why I rolled my eyes like that. <laughs> Seriously, you, you don't need this stuff. Um, you have like a, a suture. So, you know, you get punctured by something. Glass, you get you know, shot in your face, your airbag went off, you got glass on top of your airbag. I've seen people have that too. Somehow the glass breaks and the airbag goes off. It's like, what the fuck? And then they collide glass in their cheekbones. You know, like they're, you know, they pull that out. You know, they patch back up. It's some, so, yeah. And I have some, uh, you know, some, I have a, I have a go towel. It's a good thing to carry. Actually, I have a, tweezers so maybe sutures might do it they might can you get it with tweezers there you go maybe you're in the woods and you got a little tick on you like a pretty bad tick you know i get lyme disease so you gotta pick that off your neck you know unless you get unless you get in your back of your neck or top of your head if you have a lot of hair like i do you don't know where it is you should pull that tick out of there because you want lyme disease and that's a small uh, Probably a small percentage are getting Lyme disease, but still, you don't want to get Lyme disease. Um, there's not a big bandage. So keeping stuff, and then also like I got in here, I got like a first aid manual. Okay, so kind of like you don't know shit. Make sure you carry one of these. Okay, I mean. There's stuff on heat exhaustion. There's stuff on heat stroke, frostbite, cold exposure. If you're in your car, you might have these problems. I mean, how many times you couldn't get the window down after a car accident? Now you're stuck in there with the heat index of 100 degrees outside. Maybe you got a flat tire, but like you're, you, you have to change your tire, but then you get back in your car, but you have, you know, you turn the air on, but then you're like, uh, I don't have much gas. There's like all these probabilities could happen and you have to be prepared, okay? Just for situations. Um, the symptoms on broken bones and mostly fractured of fingers. And how, what do you do about it? You know, how do you take care of it? Splintering, splinters and sprains and burns. You can burn your hand on your engine. You don't, you're checking your oil, you touch something, whoa, whoa, what the fuck? You burn your hand. People do it all the time. And you can burn your hand severely. You have to, like, know exactly what to do. You know, your first aid kit above your little, you know, visor. That's why it's called visor. You you pull off your ice pack, boom, you put your hand. Cool your down, hand down. You know, take down the swelling. Raise your hand up. Draw that blood circulation down. Put your hand up high so you get that. Burn and stop burning. Okay, then you bandage it up. Right, right. So there's things to do. You know, when you, you're taking care of your car, you're taking care of things, shit happens sometimes. Maybe you're jacking up your car and it falls on your foot. Because you got a too big of a truck and you barely know how to do shit. And you're out there in the bush. You know, there's shock. You know, some people have trauma. They have. They can, some people can easily deal with trauma than others. Some, some, because maybe they have a job dealing with trauma, like a firefighter, a police officer, a military officer, or whatnot. They might be able to handle shock better. Maybe, you're, but you're not. You're like, you're just a regular person or whatnot. You know, you're just, you're not working a job that's stressful all the time in a way of dealing with the public. So like, you might be stressed out. You know, anxiety or trouble breathing towards the situation that you have to drive towards. And now you're all stressed out in the car. You can't seem to, you can't seem to get your breathing right. Now there's ways to kind of calm yourself down. There's ways to look at Survival Ninja Dan here and his meditation videos as well. Sunburn, you know. There's even unconsciously things, mental, um, Victims or not men, not mentality awareness. Yeah, have an awareness. It's all about awareness. You know, you're in the highway, right? You open your door to just 
check something maybe in your back seat. Maybe you're you went to your gra you went to grandma's house, but on the way to grandma's house, uh, you're bringing her a cake and it went flying over the back seat. You get out of the high you get off your car off the highway, but you're parked on the side. You open your door, boom, there it goes halfway down the block, halfway down you know, the highway, you know, and now um you know. Now like. And you know, maybe you got your hand on it. I, I don't know. Like, there's all sorts of probabilities that could go wrong in situations that you need to be prepared. You know, like, so, um, and also, like, yeah, like, that would be basically cause an accident in a way that your door just got flown off. And it's really not your problem, but it is because you stopped automatically sudden on the highway and now your door got smacked off because you're like oh my god my cake that i baked for six hours for grandma is all over my car you're all pissed off you stop your car in the middle of the highway you get out boom somebody hits you boom like that this is all this like mindful stuff like and a lot of people do that stuff they they also there's people that create road rage create road rage get out of the car you swing your fists at each other and now you're hurt real bad. Now that you've screamed so much at somebody, now they hurt you back and you're getting your car, you're all bloodied up and what you gonna do? You better grab something, right? And have something next to you, right? You can defuse the situation, diffusion, diffuse the situation of being awareness of not being in those conversations, but in a way of shit happens. They're sometimes they're just accidents and you have to be prepared. Like car accidents. Or just you're in a rural area, like rural area, sorry. And it's getting a little late. And you're like tired. And you're like, you know, upset about something. And then you're like, you know, leave me alone. And then somebody shoots you or something. Or something happens. Or you get a car accident, drink a little bit or whatnot. You know, be prepared for. You know, even your, your your own reactions. You know, maybe you came from the bar, you got a car accident, but then it's like, it wasn't your fault, but you've been drinking. You know, what you gonna do? You know, like, there's even scenarios in a way that maybe, you know, there's ways if I, you know, sober up real quick or something, I don't know. There's all sorts of survivals in a way that maybe you don't want to avoid getting arrested. You know, um, that's, we're just talking, I'm just talking about first aid, but in a way that, you know, there's so many scenarios and so many things in consciousness what I learn in, in my own life and my own survival. But these things you're good to have. I mean, like, you got to have something that you're going to grab right there, right now, you know, and and do it because you're not going to have time to climb your back seat, look for it. When you're bleeding to death or your girlfriend, you know, got a head injury or or your wife or your, or your, or your husband or your boyfriend or whoever, your son, your daughter or your, your father, your mother, you know, brother or sister or, or a total stranger and you're just a cab driver, okay? And you're going to have to take care of that person, okay? Because first off, pretty much all loved ones, you love them. You don't want them to seem to get hurt. And when they do get hurt, you want to care for them, right? You know, so having something like this right on your visor. Right there. Super pull things that you need. Treat the wounds. Treat your your family members, who whoever in the car with you. There you go. You're going to have time to run the back seat and grab all that shit. Especially when it's a puncture wound. Or drive-by shooting. Thanks for watching.